NPR, and KHN, Summer Bummer, a young camper's expensive snake bite. Guess how much? We'll play a clip. Something's making noise on the trail near Oakley Yoder's house. Probably either a snake or a frog. Hope it's a frog. Hopefully it's not a snake. Oakley loves being outside, but snakes are not her favorite animal. She was away last summer on a climbing trip in southern Illinois, and at dusk, her group headed back to camp. I felt something, like, grab onto my foot. So I think it went in through the side of the toe. That's where the dent right here is. And I thought it was just thorns or glass or something like that. But the pain started to move up her leg. It was a snake bite, probably a copperhead. She told the counselors, and to keep the venom from spreading, they put a tourniquet around her ankle. One of them gave her a piggyback ride out of the woods. Oakley eventually got in a helicopter and was taken to St. Vincent Hospital in southern Indiana. She got four vials of anti-venom. And how much did that cost? I don't know. How much? Well, a big chunk of that, about $55,000, was the air ambulance, which this little girl clearly needed. I mean, this is a big emergency. And we've talked about high air ambulance. 55000 for an air ambulance. Wow. Prices before on Bill of the Month. But the other big chunk, which we want to talk about today, is for those four tiny vials of antivenom that she got. That was more than $60,000 itself. Why? Why are those four vials so expensive? Well, when your kid gets a poisonous snake bite, they'll die without rapid treatment, so you're vulnerable to financial extortion. Look, even with the antivenom, she ended up with signs of early gangrene in her leg. But $60,000? There's two reasons why it gets so high. The first is the drug maker in this case had a monopoly on the product. Only one company had the license to sell this antivenom when Oakley got bitten, and the U.S. doesn't regulate drug prices. It's not a particularly high-tech drug, but in our country, the wholesale price was $3,200 per vial at the time. The same or a similar drug in Mexico is 100 or $200. What? The second thing... <laughs> That's Jeez. outrageous. ...is there's a big hospital market, like booze at a restaurant. The hospital has a captive audience here and can mark up with abandon. And in this case, they did five times the wholesale cost. Hi, caramba. So it came out to one hundred forty-two thousand nine hundred thirty-eight dollars. That was the report. That's how much? Insane. How much did the family end up paying? They're extremely lucky. They didn't pay anything. You could call it a miracle. Mm. They had zero dollars out of pocket. The the camp came in to pay what their insurance didn't. But I would add the bigger problem is when your insurer and your company jumps in to save you from these extortionate bills. Well, the next year the prices for premiums in your company are likely to go up. Yep. Editor's note, in the audio version of this story, reported that the tourniquet was applied to the ankle of the nine-year-old after she was banned by the venomous snake. The CDC explicitly says applying a tourniquet is not recommended. Instead, seek medical, immediate medical attention and keep the person who was bitten calm and still. I thought that was the old, uh, I thought that's what they said to put a tourniquet. At least that's what I remember it, being taught, at least. Yeah, they said don't, a long CDC time ago. said don't do it, so I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. That's why. I'm sure they have a reason uh, why. Yeah, they actually put that in the article. So I'm being sure, oh, yeah, we need to make sure to talk about that. That's kind of important. Yeah. We don't want to mislead people. But this is something that has definitely been mentioned before as a problem, because this is the same uh, way for any anti-venom, that they're all ridiculously expensive yeah. because they're hardly ever used yeah. when you need them. You need them. Oh, yeah. you're paying for it. Yeah. CNN, patients are paying up to 20 times more for neurological drugs since 2004 study finds. Out-of-pocket costs for Americans with neurological conditions have risen so rapidly over 12 years. A new study says doctors need better access to drug price information to minimize patient financial burden. Out-of-pocket costs are on the rise for commonly prescribed neurological medications. Public in the Journal of Neurology found that on average, out-of-pocket costs for people taking medication for multiple sclerosis had risen the greatest over the past 12 years, costing 20 times more in 2016 than in 2004. A decade ago, doctors hardly considered out-of-pocket costs because they were close to $0 in monthly co-pays. But that has changed. Using a large-scale healthcare claims database, researchers examined out-of-pocket costs for more than 912,000 Americans with dementia, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, peripheral neuropathy, and Parkinson's disease. Over 12 years, these patients were privately insured and took at least one neurological medication. Out-of-pocket costs were up for each disorder, but MS patients have seen the sharpest rise. MS medications out-of-pocket costs were $15 a month in 2004, and by 2016, they were $309 a month. In 2016, MS patients in high-deductible plans paid $660 a month, compared with $246 a month for those not in high-deductible plans. 
The researchers also found that 5% of MS patients pay $9,855 or more over two years, with a median household income in 2016 at $53,000. This is just more exploitation. Yes. <laughs> these more. are vulnerable people. They have to take these medications. Oh, they'll die. And then once again, we have the same situation where doctors can't just surprise, uh, can't prescribe what medication they think is most effective. Now they may have to turn to alternatives that maybe don't work as well. Yep. I mean, we had the same thing with the diabetes medication. So. Yep. We. Really need to change the system. It's a common theme of this episode. We'll talk more about prices of drugs. CNN, whistleblowers, company at heart of (laughs) 97,000% drug price hike bribe doctors to boost sales. Sorry, that was a big percentage. Two whistleblowers at a pharmaceutical company responsible for one of the largest drug price increases in U.S. history said the company bribed doctors and their staffs to increase sales according to newly unsealed documents in federal court. The whistleblower said in a lawsuit against the company was part of an international multi-tiered strategy by Questcore Pharmaceuticals, now Malincrot, to boost sales of HP Ant- Actar gel, cheating the government out of billion- millions of dollars. The price of the drug, best known for treating a rare infant seizure disorder, has increased almost 97,000% from $40 a vial in to- the year 2000 to nearly 39000 today. The Justice Department has now intervened in the case after conducting its own extensive investigation. The Price increase combined with aggressive sales, push in rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, and other areas has pushed the drug's annual sales to over one billion. The whistleblower said the drug maker's conduct has cheated the federal government out of billions and that should not be paid, thereby enriching the company and subjecting patients to unapproved, unsafe, potentially ineffective uses of HP Actrapar gel. Questcore has attempted to conceal and cover up its payment of kickbacks and its illegal promotion of HP Actar gel by making false statements to the FDA and directing employees to conceal evidence by failing to disclose the full nature, extent of its advertising, promotional marketing materials, and plan. Jeez. Wow. You can't trust these uh, pharmaceuticals. Yeah. I think that's a pretty common theme here. Well, that's a good segue to your next story. Yes. <laughs> NPR opioid executive John Kapoor found guilty in landmark bribery case. Yeah, so the uh, prosecutors laid out what they say was a nationwide scheme to boost sales of this opioid painkiller. And you can think about it in three different steps. The first thing they did was they targeted doctors who were known to over-prescribe opioids. The head of sales, somebody who pleaded guilty and testified for the prosecution, said the, the company ran toward pill mills, not away from them. To insist therapeutics, he said, Pill mills meant dollar signs. What? Yeah. The next thing they did was, as you said, they bribed doctors to write prescriptions. That often meant that people were being prescribed really high opioids, and these people, these patients, didn't necessarily need it. They set up a sham speakers program where doctors were paid not to give lectures but to write prescriptions. And then the last thing they did was they set up a whole call center where INSYS employees deceived insurance companies, saying whatever was necessary to get their expensive medication covered. That includes fabricating cancer diagnoses. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> These have been crazy videos. Yeah. Or audio. Yeah, audio. All right. Got a follow up. NPR. For example, uh, INSYS sales reps received higher bonuses when they convinced doctors to write prescriptions in higher doses. So you're convincing wow. doctors to prescribe something that's not necessarily And needed. And I remember we talked about this, how they were pushing those higher yeah. addictive doses. Mm-hmm. The idea was get patients hooked and kind of keep them coming back for more. Mm-hmm. They even made a music video that was shown during the trial about this. Here's a clip. We can come into your office, we can go and bring some lunch and while your staff is getting fair, we can start discussing substance. Yes, Lord. That is, that is incredible. Uh, clearly, the, the lengths that they were willing to go to to do this. Yeah, and things got even crazier. <laughs> okay, things got even crazier. Wait for look, it. <laughs> look, look, though, I understand the lunches and the checks, but really? Uh, this music video? This music video. Who thought great. of this? <laughs> great. They, um... They hired a former exotic dancer to be part of their sales team. She was actually one of the defendants who was found guilty yesterday in the trial. Wow. And she she gave a lap dance to a doctor to try and convince him to prescribe their opioid medication. <laughs> what? They hired some... <laughs> Is okay. anyone surprised, though? She was sealing the deal. It's... 
Hey, it's all about sex, drugs, and money, right? Yeah, and that's well, that's what it is. Closing out this NPR report. Love it. This is a criminal case, not a civil case. Often, um, you see pharmaceutical companies getting in trouble in civil cases. That mm-hmm. means big fines. But this criminal case means possible prison time. These executives are facing up to two decades behind bars. The other thing to note here is that they were charged with racketeering conspiracy. That means this crime, these crimes were systemic. They were conspiring. This was not just a few bad actors. Right. Racketeering was originally designed to go after organized crime. The prosecutors are essentially saying this: these pharmaceutical executives were like drug lords. Just briefly, Gabriella, uh, is this case going to set a precedent? Uh, Yes, most likely. This kind of represents an aggressive strategy by the federal government to go after pharmaceutical companies for their role in fueling the opioid epidemic. And experts say that this is likely the beginning of a trend and that this case could be a blueprint for future prosecution. Yeah, I'm very interested. That interested to see what's going to happen. It's a criminal case. It's not very interesting. Just, oh, you're going to get fined money. Yeah, it's you're going to prison. Somebody's no, going. Yeah, to prison. no it's one about, wants to go. To it's prison. about damn time. Yeah. HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. If you'd like to support the show, it's value for value. If this show has provided you value, please provide value back in whatever form you feel necessary or adequate. HealthyTalkShow.com slash support is a link to our PayPal. If you have Amazon Prime, you can give us free money. It's a little complicated. Visit HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. You have to link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch account. But you can give us free money every month, $2.50 a month. Believe me, it helps. HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. Value for value. CNN. Amid America's opioid crisis, deaths from stimulants are steadily rising. A new report from the CDC shows overdose deaths involving cocaine and psychostimulants such as methamphetamines, MDMA, Ritalin, and caffeine have been steadily rising. In 2017, there were 23,139 overdose deaths involving these drugs, making up nearly a third of the 70,237 fatal overdoses that year, according to the report. Between 2015 and 2016, cocaine-related overdose death Rates rose 52%, while psychostimulant-related overdose death rose 33%. From 2016 to 2017, fatal overdose death of both classes of drugs rose by a third. Overdose deaths from these stimulants jumped from 12,000 to 2015 to 17,000 in 2016, increasing 42% in just one year. The report evaluated overdose drug data across age, sex, and race across the U.S. Census regions from 20, 2003 to 2017. It also drilled down on, to evaluate drug use patterns in 34 states in the District of Columbia. The researchers found that the rise in death rates from ex, examined, sim, examined stimulants occurred across all demographic groups as well as in some states. Cocaine-related overdose fatalities remained stable from 2003 to 2006 and then steadily fell by about 11% annually until 2012. They noted that the decline in cocaine-related overdose deaths mirrored the drop in supply and an increase in cost. Interesting. From 2012 to 2017, cocaine-involved deaths have risen 29% annually. Rates of psychostimulant overdose deaths were stable from 2003 to 2010. Between 2010 and 2017, researchers found that psychostimulant-related death rates increased annually by 29%. The researchers also found that opioids were also frequently involved in these fatal overdoses. In 2017, 73% of all cocaine-related overdose deaths involved opioids. In that same year, half of psychostimulant-related overdose fatalities also involved opioid use. Do we see it? Yeah, an issue here. So uh, my it's, takeaway: it's not the cocaine. It's it's not the psychostimulants. But yeah. it's, it's that don't mix your opioids <laughs> with your other drugs. I guess the cocaine has fentanyl in it. Please spread the yeah. word. Please, it's, please. Those opioids, man. Thank you so much for watching. For more healthy talk show, please consider subscribing to our podcast over at healthytalkshow.com/slash subscribe. It's free. Twitter and Instagram at Healthy Talk Show. Drop the W. We record the podcast live Mondays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time over at HealthyTalkShow.com/live. Love and light.